Good morning, guys. This is Scott Fresner with TBiz Network. This webinar is on the tweaking of the final steps using TCEPs. And by the way, this webinar will work with any version of TCEPs. I'm obviously going to be working with TCEPs 3.0, but the tweaking pretty much happens after you've run the routines. And so we're going to cover things that many of you uh, kind of do now. I, I'm still surprised I get emails from people that run routines and they go, I didn't... Uh, get it quite exactly right and I'll say what tweaks did you do and the response is often that I didn't do any tweaks and the problem with doing uh, any kind of color separations using automated routines is that the automated routines tend to average things out meaning it looks for specific color palettes and it tries to find very specific off-the-shelf colors and at the end of the day it's your job to do some tweaks to this and try and make it look more like the original as you know I do separations all day long and I will typically run of course, TCEP, so when I'm done, I might take five or ten minutes and do additional tweaks. Granted, some jobs with a lot of Pantone matches, uh, these are samples of what TCEP does, and a job like the lower left image right here has lots of colors, and I might take an extra 15, 20 minutes tweaking, but the truth is, without a program like TCEP, this would take, uh, could take you hours if you're new to Photoshop, and even if you're a power user, you have to create the underbase and build all the colors and make the channels, and it just takes time. And so TCEP does the heavy lifting, and your job then is just take a couple of minutes and use your screen print intuition and do tweaks that you know will help the image look and print better at press. Now, before we do that, though, I find a lot of times even I'll be guilty of running a job and then after the fact wishing I had spent some time tweaking it uh, before I ran the separation. This is a good example of a typical low-quality JPEG image. And if I zoom in on this, you can see that it's got lots of artifacts. These are called artifacts and this is because someone made this file as a low quality JPEG. This file may have been built as a as in a vector program but you can see how soft the image is. And the problem is if you separate this job you can do all the tweaks in the world but at the end of the day and by the way this is a job that I did separate and I wasn't paying much attention and I had to come back pretty much re-separate it because I missed the fact that it was pretty low quality. Zooming in makes a lot of difference and you zoom in you see all this junk and at the end of the day, you'll spend, you'll spend way too much time tweaking after the fact because you were a little lazy going in. So with that in mind, TSEPs both 2 and 3 both have a JPEG enhanced routine. I want you to make sure you always check your job. Always zoom in on them just to see what you have to work with. And in this case, I'll zoom in so we can see the changes. I'm going to run Improve Low Quality JPEG. You can see the difference. It, it made a huge difference in all the artifacts. The artifacts are pretty much gone now. Now, you may think, well, it softened the image of hair, but I'm, I'm way happier having it softer than I am having it uh, be all full of artifacts. The problem with a job like this, though, is, and if you separate it, you'll see it, is that a program like TCEP sees the color, and it's going to see, obviously, black in this area right here, but it's going to see a a gray in this area around the black is going to see these soft edges that are going to be grays. And TCEP says, I see gray, and I'm going to give you a separation for that. And so that's the problem with working with low-quality artwork. You can upsample all, all day long. And the truth is, you get stuff like this. There's no magic. You get, you get stuff like this. I'm not saying you, you would turn jobs like this down. This is what you get. The customer says, that's all I've got, and that's what you have to work with. But you need to really take a few minutes in the beginning and tweak the artwork. The same thing goes for uh, opening up. PDF images that come out of AI e, uh, as an EPS or an AI or a PDF file. If I go to File, Open, if you build the images in AI or Corel Draw and then you want to have them work properly in either TCEPs, you want to make sure and save them as a PDF or an EPS when you open or import a file into Photoshop that was a PDF or an EPS or an AI. You get this window right here. The default setting in this window is 72 dpi with anti-aliasing turned on. The problem is if you blow by that window and you're ready to do your SEPs, you've just made a great vector file into junk and you've made it low quality and you've turned on anti-aliasing which tries to soften edges. That's the softened edge. If you run this through TSEPs, TSEPs says I see pink and I see light pink and it's going to give you glows around things and halos. So make sure that whenever you open up a file in Photoshop that you know came from a vector file that you always check this menu and as I've mentioned many times in my other workshops if you're a vector snob and you know who you are and that means that you really don't hate, like to see jaggies with fast computers today you could actually open this file up at 600 dpi make sure and turn anti-aliasing off and now when you 
zoom in on the file, yes, they're still jaggies because we're at 600 DPI, and if you don't like those, those are going to go away when you print them. But there's no soft edges. There's no anti-aliasing turned on. The point of all this is this will help minimize the tweaking after you've run the sets. If you don't catch these things, and you're going to get files in that people opened and saved and they had anti-aliasing turned on, you're going to get them in, and they have glows and shadows around all the lettering. And your job after the fact is you end up erasing all this stuff, and it just takes you time to clean things up. Part of my day in separating is just spend erasing stuff. I, I know that it's all the customer had, and it's the best we're going to get, and I just spend time erasing all these, these glows around things. So let's just run a quick routine on a job. The main routines in TCEPs tend to uh, like to work with a fixed color palette. They're going to average things out. The routine that I run all the time, every day when I do SEPs, just to see what I get is the standard nine color routine. Click. This is a job that only works on a dark shirt, so I'm going to load the black version twice. You're not seeing it because I'm multi-monitoring, and this file popped up in my second monitor. When it's done separating, I'll drag it down. For some reason, the uh, program caught the second monitor that I had to preview what you're seeing. So it's cooking right now. In fact, if we open up the channel's palette, you can, panels, you can see it cooking. Here's the actual separation file. This is one that's actually online, and if you... Uh, need a generic file to play with or to, to just uh, screw around with or to print and show your customers. This is actually in the TCEP samples file that you can download. And it's very generic. It says we print killer black shirts. Now, TCEPs obviously runs lots of colors. And the default shirt color in TCEPs is black. And it does give you options for the underbase in TCEPs 3.0. 2.0 doesn't have this. It gives you more high contrast underbase and more of a flat underbase. And flat underbase is there because sometimes when you're doing flames and images with lots going on, you want the flatter underbase and let the colors uh, create the detail. If you want to use the black in the shirt as the, uh, the contrast in the image, you use the high contrast underbase. Now, if we look at this thing, we're going to just look at the colors. And the point of this whole thing is that TCEPs pulls lots of colors. And what we're going to talk about is how to tweak these colors, how to reduce the color count, get this down to six or seven colors or five colors. And so we first preview to see what we have to go with. Now, this design was done as an image that will only work on a black shirt. That means that the black plate is wrong. Don't go throwing that away so soon, though, because I'm going to show you in a second how you can use the black channel to remove more information from the underbase. Sometimes the underbase is just too much. Maybe it's a little just got too much going on, and you want to remove and have more black sh of the shirt showing through on a black shirt. And you can actually remove the black from the underbase. So we'll leave the black channel there. TCEPs does give you an optional halftone black. That's nice on a black shirt. Sometimes you have to print black on black. Sometimes you, if you have enough press heads uh, and you see those hot images that are hanging in Walmart and they might be 10 or 12 colors, I guarantee you they're printing black on a black shirt. But because that way they can also print on different shirt colors. But the black on a black shirt helps kind of tie things together. But again, we can take this channel and use it to remove information from the underbase. And I'll show you that too in a second. I'm not going to delete those channels right now. So let's talk about a feature that I use all the time. And there's buttons for all of these things, but I really want to show you how to do it without the buttons. I think it's, it's better and it's faster, it's more productive if you can learn a couple of mouse moves that don't force you to go over and use the buttons. There's lots of buttons over here, and these things all work, and they help you combine channels, and it helps simplify the process if you're new to Photoshop. Let's first of all see if we can reduce the color count. That's the pink back there. And I know I need that. It's called pink. It's really kind of a purple. And the assigned TCEPs color is Pantone 219. I know in the original artwork, that's a little darker purple. And I can actually take and change that color right here. And I can see on screen what's going to happen. A lot of times you'll have the channel that has the information you need. It found the close color, and it's just off a little bit from the original design. And so what we'll, what we'll do is, let's just do this. Let's bring this design down a little smaller. And I'm going to do a Save As, because I want to open up the same file one more time so we can see it side by side. We'll do a Save As Seps.
we're just going to put this down below. We can kind of have it as a reference. Just kind of sit it down there. Now, when I do SEPs, I typically am multi-monitoring, so I can actually have the original on one monitor, my SEPs on a separate monitor. It really helps you clean up some of your, I call it the real estate, a little more screen space. So I'm looking for that color there. The color that's in the design is more of, it's close, by the way. It's just a little, little more of a purple. Let's just click on that. Just change it. Don't be shy. And by the way, if you're in this window called, called Color Picker, if you click on Color Libraries, Photoshop finds the nearest Pantone match. It does a terrible job on some colors. Purples it likes, reds it hates, blues it's okay with. It sometimes will be so far off you wonder who the heck's driving Photoshop. I will often force the color. I'll look and go, that's not the color I want. I want it to be this color. But in this case, it did a pretty good job. And the key is if you say okay, it gives you the new Pantone number. That's the key thing because it puts the new Pantone number in the, ch in the channel header. So now it doesn't say pink anymore. Now it tells you that it's this Pantone purple. The same for the yellow. This design actually uh, has more of a golden yellow in it. TSEPS looks for a standard off-the-shelf lemon yellow Pantone 102. But if I click on this color swatch and bring up color picker, I can actually sample from my design the yellow. I'm going to find the, the lightest yellow. You can see it's more of a golden yellow. I'm just clicking around sampling. Go to color libraries. It gives me the nearest Pantone match. Say OK. Say OK. So typically you'll go through your design very quickly and you'll just pick the right colors. Now for a no-brainer design, this was what I would kind of call a no-brainer design. No one's ever going to see the original. They're going to see the printed shirt. And as long as this eagle jumps off the shirt, everybody's happy. Uh, but if you're the artist operator and you built this eagle and you have a picky customer who wants you to nail it, then you've got to go through and pretty much tweak the colors. It takes just a couple of seconds to go through and look at each channel. There's a little bit of gray in this, but we can uh, maybe dump the green later on. There is some gray. TSEPS is always going to pull you a gray, and the gray is handy on some designs. Some designs you don't need it. It's going to pull the red, the blue, the brown. So typically, you kind of jet through it, take a look at what you've got to work with here. So the first thing you're going to do is try and reduce the color count. Let's take a look at it with all the colors in place. Typically, I work without the highlight on because the highlight will tend to mute some colors or make them, make them brighter, actually, and it will tend to deceive how that color really looks. So we'll take a look at it without the highlight on. We're going to look at the colors and see what we have to work with. Okay, lots of colors. Look pretty good. I could probably print it like this, but if you notice, I think the pink, purple we'll call it, is weak. I think the blues are weak, but it's no big deal. If I click on my pink or my new pink or purple channel, and go to my favorite place, which is called Tone Curve. Now, some of you that drive Photoshop on a regular basis, you like levels. I'm kind of a curves guy, and so I like curves because I can do what's called an S-curve, and I can kind of play around with things a little too much, and I think I have a little more control. I have worn off the keys on my keyboard. Uh, the shortcut for Tone Curve is Control-M on a PC, Command-M on a Mac, and my M key is worn off on my keyboard, Control-M. Think of a curve as being, this is the shadow area. That means if you were to look at the film, it's the darkest area of the film. This is the highlight area. This would be the dead white areas on your films or on your separation. And so you can't really look at it on the black shirt. That may be deceiving. You may be thinking you're going to make the white uh, lighter when you really want to make the white channel darker to make the white ink lighter, if that makes sense. So I'm actually on the pink purple channel. I click on the curve and bring in just the mid-tone a little bit. Let's just see what happens. Too much. Okay, here's your first very key point with TSEPS. If I zoom in, I can see that I'm having, I'm printing some of that pink on top of the half-tone under base. Let's take off the other colors. We'll leave the base on, take these colors off, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. The problem is going to be that some of this white is going to show through around that pink. I don't want that. 
I call it washing a color over the halftone. When you look at a really good separation and you see a color that maybe is a darker shade and you look and see, and you can see there's white underneath it, but it's halftones, that's a good job where the entire, I want this all this area to be pink. I want that to fall off the underbase and wash onto the black shirt. I want to give a kind of a perceived dark color. If I look closely at the, at the original, I can see that I've got a lot of color on the black. And the way to get that is to print the underbase and let the color kind of wash over it, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Tone Curve, Control-M on the keyboard. I just did a shortcut. And if it's not enough, I'm going to pick up my second favorite tool called Dodge Burn Tool. Now, if you're new to Photoshop, these little icons may not make much sense. You might go, what the heck are those things? Well, the Dodge tool comes from the old camera days where you had an enlarger and a light shining down on the photographic film, and you would take a little, like a little fan or your hand, and you would actually hold it in front of the light, which would lighten areas. You would cup your hand and let the light go through your fingers, through, through your hand, and use your hand almost like a like a control and you would burn areas in and so that's where these 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 came from the sponge tool is just where you're desaturating you're just sponging up the color so the dodge burn tool default which is the little lollipop tool is the dodge, the uh, dodge tool you can change it to the burn tool I leave it on the dodge tool because I can use the alt key on the keyboard or the option key on the Mac and I can make it go from a dodge tool to a burn tool now if you are new to Photoshop every tool has a tip and this is called a brush and I've got it set for a really big brush way too big but I am zoomed in if I right mouse click I can reduce the brush think of it like a spray can how big is the spray pattern if I hold the, the spray can really close to the to the wall it's a real small spray pattern If I hold the can back it's a big spray pattern this is like my brush if I want to burn in more purple here if I hold down the Alt key, in my case, on the keyboard, our option on the Mac, and burn, I'm going to burn it in. I want that pink-purple to fall off the underbase onto the black shirt. I'm going to burn it in. I'm going to zoom back. Now that now the tooltip gets smaller because I'm zoomed back, I'm going to burn it in. Burn it in. And you're thinking, well, what happened to the detail? The detail is going to come from the underbase. You know, if you take off a color on a, on a great shirt print and look at just the, the underbase on a black shirt, that's, if that works, then your design is probably going to work because you're going to put color on top of that. But you've got to make sure the color doesn't allow, allow too much underbase to show through where you don't want to show through. You want the color to kind of wash off the underbase. So the main tools you're going to use in the beginning are Tone Curve and Dodge Burn Tool. You can burn things in, you can dodge things, you can lighten things. Let's take a look at the red channel. Looks good. TSEP says that's kind of an orange in the original. We need to add some yellow to it to make it an orange. And I'm thinking that's good, but let's zoom in. TSEP says, uh, I saw that red kind of weak over there. And uh, Scott Fresner says, I want that to be red. I don't want that to be half tones of the underbase peeking through the red I want the red to wash over that underbase and so again dodge burn tool alt key on the keyboard I want to burn that in I want that red to fall off that underbase I don't want to have that underbase peeking out around it I want the red to fall over it you look at the stores now and you see bad separations where you see lots of white underbase peeking around the color that's because someone didn't take time to just kind of get those colors to be to wash off the underbase now if you zoom in really closely we can see that it's really washing off that's red with no base that's okay that's what I want I want to give that kind of little perceived extra little depth to it, a little extra shadow to it so I'm gonna go through the whole design now, I could just take the uh, tone curve and curve the entire thing but it might make the overall red too much let's just see what happens we'll do a uh, shortcut control M to tone curve to see what happens if we curve it a little bit See, it's almost too much. Now I'm bringing in the red where there's the orange. So for this design, I would take one minute. I'm on Dodge Burn Tool, and I'm just going to burn it in a little bit, burn it in a little bit, burn it in a little bit, burn it in, burn it in, burn it in. I'm a happy camper. It's going to be nice and bright. Get those little tips. It's the little details, I think, that, that really make a difference. Right down here, burn that thing in. 
Okay, you're saying, well, TSF should have caught that. You know, we're trying to take a design with lots of color, and see how weak that is there? So TSEP says, I see that weak. We know that we want the print a little brighter than that. Now, the blue is the same thing. I'll wrap up this design really quickly. The blue, do I need both blues? Well, look at the eagle's head. I've got a little bit of dark blue in it, and I've got some light blue in it. I kind of like them both. If I could print them both, I would print them both. Let's print them both. I'm going to click on the darker blue channel. This is the assigned color from TSEPS, Pantone 286. I think the original blue is a little lighter than that. Again, this is a non-reference piece, but I could just force this to be a little lighter color. Find the nearest Pantone match. Say OK. And where am I going? Tone curve, my favorite place. Let's do tone curve. Let's see what happens if we pop the blue a little bit. Uh, yeah, baby, that's good. Probably too much in the head. And I could again take Dodge Burn Tool and burn it in a little bit. Burn, burn, burn. I'm holding down the Alt key on the keyboard, so it's now the Burn Tool. Now, this file came from a, a uh, original piece of art that was pretty good, but it's been kind of lost along the way. You're going to find that when you get low-res files that have uh, vignetted edges, this has a soft edge, kind of a vignetted edge down here with the, the uh, original glow. I'll show it to you on the original. There's the original, kind of a kind of a glow to it. And TSEP says, well, I see a little bit of color down there. And we know we really don't need that. And so I, I will often put the colors back on here. I will often click on the underbase, take tone curve, and bring in the highlight end just a hair. Now, let's see what we have going on here first. The third most important critical panel I want you to keep open is called the info panel. I leave it parked down below, and I'm moving it so that you can see it in case this gets cut off on your end on your screen. I typically leave it parked below the channels panel. It's parked all the time. The info panel, and we get there, by the way, by going to Window, Info. It's checked, which means it's open. So we've opened the info panel. These used to be called palettes, and I will obviously occasionally call them palettes. It reads density levels. I am selected on the underbase only. I'm looking at other channels, but I'm only look. I'm only going to read the underbase because that's what I'm. I'm. I'm clicked on. People get confused, thinking, "Well, I'm on the eye is on the channel right here," and they try and work on it. No, you have to click and be selected on it. You could have an eye on one channel and be selected on another channel. And everything you do is going to happen to this channel, but you're looking at the wrong one. So you've got to make sure you're looking at the right one. I want to select that. I'm going to put the shirt color in place. I'm going to read this area. And what am I reading? Photoshop is deceiving. It will tend to show these areas of 1 and 2% areas that you'll never burn on a screen, but it shows them to you. And it tends to deceive you a little bit because you think you're going to have all that junk printing, and you're not going to have it printing. You're never going to hold that 1% dot. Now, if I move the info over here, that's 62%. I'm thinking I'd like that to be 100% under the blue. But for right now, we'll deal with this area here. So if I go to Tone Curve, Control-M, and bring in the highlight area, I've changed how I'm seeing it, but I really haven't changed how it's going to print because I just removed it just to make me feel warm and fuzzy about it. And, and so a lot of times you'll have these little glows around things that are images that are never going to print. And you know that by just using the info panel. By the way, while we're here and discussing the info panel, let's take a look at the We Print Color Blacks. We know that that white ink needs, that needs to be bright white 100%. And I'm just reading it to make sure that it's 100%. We know that probably a lot of the background of the head should be 100%. Oh, that's interesting. Look at that, 94%. Well, that may be OK. But boy, I probably would want to print solid white in most of these areas other than where there's the shadows. And I'm reading around and seeing that some of this stuff is 98, 99. Why would I want to print 99% when I should be printing 100%? And I'm telling you that because it's going to be a half-tone dot on your films. I'm just going to click on the tone curve. Wow, how many times have I gone here? One more time. And I'm going to bring in the shadow areas. I want to make the area on the white film, which is black, darker. Bringing in a notch, info palette reads now before and after. You can see where I've made some changes. Read the info palette. It reads what it was and what it is. This is critical. 
when I'm done separating, I will check every set of steps to make sure that if it's where it's 100% that I know it should be 100%, it is 100%. And say okay. Now we're not done, and we could spend a little more time tweaking for the sake of the webinar. I'm going to bring up a different design. The green is one of those odd ones. Notice the green upper feathers. Um, this is a. Sometimes I get stuff in where I wish the artist just had 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 thought about the, the color count because a lot of artists you know, they want to design it and that's okay but the green's kind of a throwaway. Do I need the green? I don't think I need the green. If I want to reduce the color count, one of the buttons in TCEPs is combine channels. Again, I'd rather show you how to do it without the buttons because it's very, very simple. If I want to make the green, I know I can make green with yellow and light blue. It'll be kind of a duller green, but this green is not a critical green. It's not a logo color. It's not a big key part of the design. It's not a big John Deere tractor that I know I need to nail. This is what it is, and so I'm going to actually turn the green channel off. And this is called Apply Image, and I want you to learn how to use Apply Image. I'm going to select the yellow channel green channels turned off. By the way, it's a golden yellow, so it's going to make kind of a khaki green. I'm going to go to Image, Apply Image. This is about the, the fourth place I live. Green channels turned off, so I can't see it. I select it on the yellow channel. I'm telling Photoshop to apply the green channel. You can see they got a little more yellow there. I'll turn off Preview without it, with it, without it, with it, and I want to send all of it, 100%. We'll say OK. And we're going to do the same thing for the light blue. Select the light blue. Image, apply image, and what am I looking for? The green. Now it's blue because I'm sending 100%. Let's send 50%. It's now giving me kind of that uh, turquoise. It's not a great green. I never said it was going to be a great green. That's the reason you run the nine color routine in TSEPs because it gives you choices and you can determine what are non-critical colors. By the way, a non-critical color is often brown. Here's the brown, the brown is on, the brown is off, the brown is on, the brown is off. That's by the way, while we're here, we will delete the green, drag the, key, the green to the trash can, drop it. The brown is turned off. Let's select the red channel, go to image, apply image, and select the brown. Brown is one you can almost always get for free. Turn off the uh, preview. That's without it. That's with it. And I would probably send about 70%. Not that I really need it, but if you look at the beak, it's got a little brown in there. This is reducing the color count. Now I said earlier that we had the optional halftone black. If I put that on, it, does, it definitely darkens it. And you might think it makes it a little little deeper in the dark shadow areas, and I think it does. We typically don't print black ink on a black shirt. So if you're keeping score, you can do all this, knock out colors, knock out under colors. There's a button called Remove Black from the Underbase. This is kind of cool. Just click on this, it loads the black channel into the base and deletes whatever's in the black channel from the underbase, meaning less more shirt show through. Now this only works on black shirts because if you're working on medium color shirts, which this design will not work on because there's no real black channel, uh, it'll, it'll let the more shirt show through and you'll get a little cast from like a red shirt or a pink shirt. But if I click on this button, it says here's what's going to happen, it tells, just tells you it's going to do that, and if I say stop, and if you blinked, it's hard to see that it did it. Let's delete this one. Oh, we're leaving the high contrast. Delete that one. And I think it's, you can see the difference. Now, if I, I can do it again and again and again. And remove black from under base is a nice button. You can run it two or three times. Sometimes it'll just be too flat. Maybe it's because of all those little 1 and 2 percent half tones you're seeing on the monitor that aren't going to print, but it makes it look kind of weird. I can delete the black channel. Delete the optional halftone black channel. I'm done with that now. By the way, if you deleted the black channel, the, the program will say, I can't find the black to, to remove from the underbase. That's why I didn't delete the black channel to begin with. I wanted to keep it in case I wanted to use it. Now we're down to one, two, three, four, uh, the gray. Minor. Okay, let me show you what I would do with this gray. It's a minor area. 
But I know that to get gray, I just need to reduce the underbase in that area on a black shirt. So if you're keeping score again, I was going there in a second ago. If you're keeping score, we've talked about tone curve, dodge burn tool, info panel, and apply image. The, the next one that's very important is called load selection, meaning I, would, I just want to remove all this information from the gray from the underbase. No big deal. I don't have to. But if I want to remove this information from the underbase, the way I do it is I select the underbase and I do a control click on the keyboard or command click on a Mac and I click on my gray channel. By the way, I have the gray unchecked so I can see what happens when I make this change. You can see it loaded the gray channel into the underbase. It's called load selection. The, the non-shortcut is select load selection. So you save, you select the channel you want to work on and you load the channel you want to use as kind of a mask. If you make sure your background color is set for white, because we're going to delete the gray information from the underbase. Make sure the background color is set for white. And if you press delete on the keyboard now, and Photoshop CS6 forces you to approve the color. I hate that because the, the color is set in the, in the uh, toolbar, but I hate it. But it gives you one more window. If I say OK, notice how this got a little lighter. I can do it again. Watch this area right here. Got a little lighter. I'm going to do a uh, deselect, take off the marching ants. And now I've got a little more gray information there, letting the black shirt and the underbase fall to black to give me the gray. I just got gray for free. So now I'm down to six colors, ready to go, ready to output. Let's close this file out. Let's talk about problem files. Let's run a quick routine. I'm going to run simulator process, which as you know from watching these before, that that's the routine I always run first. Give me choices. This is a file from a customer. What I want to show you in this file is how you will get those halos. This file came to me as a fairly low res file and it, because of that, again, when you separate it, TCEP says, well, I see gray around that type and it's halos around things. And again, you're going to spend quite a bit of time erasing this. And there is no, this is the kind of file you get. It is what it is. And here's the file. Now what I wanted to show you was, if I zoom in on the original, we can see that it's pretty clean. But there's still that little gray edge. See that little gray, darker gray? So TCEP says, I see brown or tan, I see a medium brown, I see a dark brown, but I see kind of a medium brown in there. I see black, and I see a darker gray, and I see a lighter gray. So if I look at my, my gray screen, guess what? That's on it. And you can see it's around the entire design. It's because of anti-aliasing being turned on and edges being softened. And TCEPS is not that smart. It says, I see a color there. I'm going to give you that color in, in your channel. So what you end up doing is you end up uh, either leaving it and hoping the other color steps on it, meaning when you print the black, will the black step on it? It might. So you sometimes leave it if it's really intense and going on. A lot of the race car designs are that way. They have so much going on, you just would spend hours erasing all these little glows. But if it's a simple image and the glows aren't so bad, these little edges that are there that aren't, you don't want aren't so bad, you'll click up the lasso tool. Make sure your background color is set for white. And make sure it's set for just selecting just the area you want. And you'll just start selecting around. I'm just doing this very quickly, very freeform. You'll select it and press delete on the keyboard and just start erasing. Now, we could use the eraser tool, obviously. I tend to like to select big, broad areas. I'm on the eraser tool. I just right mouse click to change my brush size, and I could erase this stuff. And it goes everywhere sometimes. I'm zoomed in. I'm going to right mouse click again, change the eraser, and just erase it. Now again, you could leave this stuff, and usually another color will step on it. Okay, we've talked about the Dodge Burn tool, the info palette, erasing. Let me talk to you very quickly while this file is up. Nothing to do with this file necessarily, but let's take a look and see what we got, by the way. 
If you take a look at each channel individually and double click on it, you'll notice right away that the solidity is set for 5%. This is called the opacity in the first, if you make a new channel, but when you make it into a spot color, it's called solidity. If you work through T-SEPs and take a look, you'll see that the underbase white is set for 85%. Most other colors are set for 5%. The light blue has a little bit of white in it, so it's set for 25%. What's this number mean? Well, it means that if I take off the underbase, and put all this design on a black shirt, in the real world of screen printing, that's probably what I would have. I need to display the image correctly on the monitor the way it's going to print. Now some of you will think this is wrong and you'll change this number to 100%. Well now we just pretty much said to uh, TCEPs, we're going to print high opacity yellow ink on a black shirt. You're going to be printing not high opacity yellow ink, you're going to be printing just an off-the-shelf yellow ink. And so you've, you've fooled yourself. The design looks brighter. Wow, it looks great. But it's not going to print. You did not change the actual channel. Nothing changed in the channel. The channel is still looks the same. Double click on it. Make it 5%. You only change how Photoshop displays it. So this is very important. Don't change these numbers. Leave them alone. If you make additional new spot channels yourself, make that opacity or solidity 5%. Now that feature will really help you down the road because the new feature in, that lets you preview des the design halftone and put back together as channels, this feature really helps you a lot because it's going to display correctly. Here's a file that I have already halftoned, pre-halftoned, before I send it to a rip. And that feature is called Create Halftone Dots convert separation to halftone in channels. Why I'm showing you this is because if you look at the actual channel, again the information is 5%, if I zoom in, this will show you where you there's flaws in your thinking. It'll show you where there's errors. It'll show you where you've got halftone dots you don't want. It'll show you where you have information that is uh, not correct. By the way, if you zoom in on this, we can see that we have the red, which in the case of the original, is a darker red. And to make that red darker, I'm putting an underbase below it, but I want the top red to wash over it, meaning I don't want to have no red and just red on top of dots, like red dots on white dots. I want the red to wash over all that underbase. That way it's going to be a dark red, and if I'm off register just a hair, I won't even see it because the red's going to go much darker on a dark shirt. So this number, this 5%, helps the image display correctly. So it displays on the monitor how it's going to print. And it really works out in this routine because we can now see the exact separations, how they're going to screen print, and we can do final tweaks. We can go back and, and see where we've made mistakes because you can look at each separation all by itself. In this case, I might come back to this design. I, I looked at this earlier. I brought it up, and I thought, I, I probably need more base below the red. This shows me that the base is not very intense below the red. I might come back and boost the underbase and then redo this design. Let's talk about, uh, talk about choking and trapping. A common question I get is, will T-SEPs automatically choke and trap? And the answer is uh, no. Let me separate this design real quick. Now this is a uh, spot color kind of a design. I know it's only got red, blue, and yellow, uh, black, of course. So it's not going to be too critical. But with choking and trapping, choking is reducing the, the edge of an image. It's not making it smaller. It's commonly called a skinny, where you make the outside edge skinnier. You don't make it smaller because then it wouldn't fit with the rest of the separations. So choking is reducing, and typically you choke back an underbase just a hair so colors fall on top of it and fall off of it. Remember, the 5%. If you percent red on a black shirt, you really won't see it. And so when you look at a great design, you see color red on a black shirt. If you look close, it's probably got white below it, and the red has been uh, either spread or choked. Spreading, it makes it fatter. So you can spread the top color or reduce the bottom color. So let's talk about trapping for this design. Now, this was built in CorelDRAW, and yes, I could separate this in Corel. Let's just assume we got this uh, as a JPEG, so it's no longer a vector-based image. I know that when I screen print this, I really want to have the yellow under the black just a hair. That's called trapping. I want to trap it a hair. And in Corel or Illustrator, we might stroke the yellow just a hair so it traps under it. But because we got this file as a JPEG, 
we're kind of screwed. So if I look at the yellow channel all by itself, first thing I'm going to do is just check with InfoPallet to make sure it's 100%. Wow, 100%. By the way, let's take a look at the red channel because TSEPS is looking for a specific scarlet red. Let's just read the red. 90%. Should that be 100%? You bet. What I'm going to do to make the red 100%, go to my favorite place, Tone Curve. I did a Control M on the keyboard, bring it in a little bit, and read with the info palette, 100%. That's what I want. But back to the yellow. If I want to make the yellow a little fatter, pretty simple. I'm going to actually uh, pick up Magic Wand Tool, check my tolerance. The default tolerance is 32. I might set it for 15. And what's that number? That number says find areas of similar color. If I set it just for, for 3, it's going to find pretty much just the solid black area. I'm going to click. Now I could do a shift click and click on the entire all these all these words. Shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click. Or I can go to select similar, selects all of them, including areas I don't want. I can then go up here and say subtract from selection. Click on lasso tool and just remove these from my selection. Now if we zoom in, it's pretty simple. All I want to do is make this fatter. If I go to Edit, Stroke, I want to give it a black stroke. And if I make it six, a six-pixel stroke at 300 dpi, I always want to come from the center because if I have a soft edge, I don't want it to leave the soft edge. If I come from the center and say OK, it just stroked it. Now, you may think that's too, too big, but we're zoomed in. Let's see what we've got going on here. It may be quite a bit. I print the black on top of that. We can see if we zoom in where it's overlapping slightly. So trapping is easy if it's spot color. It's not going to trap if you have the gradations. It's going to be impossible to trap a color like this yellow back here where it gradates. It's going to be impossible to trap it. We can trap the solid areas, and that's easy, but we can't trap areas that aren't solids. Let's talk about choking then. A design like this needs a choke. We know we have white underneath this, and by the way, this design has already been choked. I'll do it again real quickly, but you can see where it's choked. Remember the 5%? You can see where the yellow is falling off the white. That's the yellow, that's the white. You can see it's just a hair smaller. Wherever you've got color falling on top of a, a on top of an underbase white, you've got to you've got to either spread the color or choke the base. Now the problem is if you choke a base where it's really tiny lettering, it almost makes the base too small. This isn't so tiny, but your choices will do I spread it or choke it? You could go either way on one of these. And the way you would do it, like on the word, two, uh, the number 2012, would be you would select just these, click, shift click, shift click, shift click. Let's zoom in, get real close here. See the junk around the edge, that little gray? If I, if I let, let's, let's uh, choke this back. If I stroke this with white, I'm going to be bold and make it six pixels. I'm going to make it inside only. You would think it would be inside would be the correct, the correct way to do it. I'm going to make it six pixels, pixels skinnier. Say OK. Because I did it with the inside, I missed this junk. Control Z on the PC, undo. If I stroke it from the center, then it's going to actually give me Three pixels this way and three pixels this way. Those of you that drive AI and Corel know that stroke in those programs always goes from the center. Well, in Photoshop, you can tell it one way or the other. You always want to come from the center. If I say OK, it now made it skinnier, and it didn't leave all that junk around it. And so typically, you're going to work through your design. You're going to select the areas you want to reduce, and you're going to actually stroke them. And it's important because the design is going to be much more screen print friendly if you take time to work through all the areas of solid text. Now, areas like this will be hard. I could spread the brown, so it's going to print under the black just a hair, and the brown's a separate screen in this design. I could spread that. I couldn't do anything for the blue. I can't do anything for some of the gradated areas. I'm screwed on those areas. I could actually go here, and I could spread all these yellows. It's not just the click of a mouse, by the way. There's a button in, in TCEPS that says here, choke and spread, but it's, it's not as easy as you would think. It's going to be areas that are going to be areas that are solid. And you have to just kind of think through with your screen print intuition and start choking and, and trapping these colors.
Let's talk about pulling spot colors. Sometimes you get a job where TCEP's got you close, but it just missed maybe a key color. And you know you need it. This is a low-res file, so it's going to run pretty fast. And so oftentimes you pull a spot color. It could be a Pantone match. It could be where the customer says the text is, needs to be a separate color all by itself. And I, don't, I don't want the brown of the text to be any, the brown in the image. That means he wants to be able to print it nice and heavy with heavy squeegee pressure and not kill it in the image. Pretty good. Way too many colors, of course. But the green, I'm just going to use this as an example of how to pull a spot color. I probably got the green, but it isn't quite the green I wanted. And for lack of a better file to pull this from, let's just say we need to pull this glasses as a spot color. This is very simple, and this is going to be the, the additional area you're going to work with. You're going to have apply image, uh, load selection, dodge burn tool, tone curve, info panel, and the last most important one is using what's called color range. Your RBG, RGB is turned on. Go to select, color range, select the information you want. Your invert is checked because you're a screener who needs a positive. Play with fuzziness to pull more or less of the same color. Say OK, and that puts what's called the marching ants around that information. And in the channels panel, lower right, little rectangular box is save selection as channel. Click, and there's your new spot channel. Now, the problem with that is we don't know what color that is. We know the color's over here. That's the color we assigned to it. We need to assign that color to this channel. I could actually sample this color. I clicked on it, click on Color Libraries, Pantone 339. There's a little easier way, but I'm going to show you this way for right now. If I click on there and click on Color Libraries, I can type right now on my screen. This is the window we want to type into. If I type a number, Photoshop finds that Pantone number. I just type it on my screen, 339. Spot color, solidity, 5%. And now... If I look at it on the base, there is my new green, all by itself. Now, again, I could have made that with the green that came that TCEPs found, but I wanted to show you how to pull an additional spot color. There are many times you pull additional spot colors. It's just how, how things work. Okay, let me run one quick last routine. I'm going to run a flesh routine. Flesh is difficult, and TCEPs gives you a, a lot of options with flesh. If you have TCEPs 2, you have the brown routine, which gives you two, an orange and a flesh. TCEPs 3 does that similarly, only it gives you the uses the facial recognition feature. Now, the facial recognition works mainly when there's a face. This design actually has a, uh, a babe in it. She's pretty well, uh, but it's a, uh, she's walking away from the camera, and so the facial recognition will not do near as well as if you had a, an actual face looking at the camera. Now, the problem with this job is we have a Pantone color to match. We have Harley Orange, which I think... Let's just read it. Eyedropper, check it. I think it's a 162. I could be wrong. Now, 1375. That may or may not be right, depending on who built the artwork. But the problem is, uh, TCEPS says, uh, I'm looking for my orange. By the way, it happens to be hardly orange. I picked that when I, when I created the program. But if it wasn't, I would change it. But I'm going to read this with the info panel. Wow, 96%. Look at the info panel. I know that I want that to be a solid area. What I'm going to do is click on Rectangle Marquee, highlight it, Control-M on the keyboard to go to a Tone Curve, bring it in, and check it 100%. Control-D on the keyboard to remove the marching ants, our Command-D on a Mac. But what I want to show you on this image was I probably want the high contrast underbase. I don't want the low contrast, a little flat. I want the high contrast. I've got quite a few flesh options, and the, the facial recognition will find a lot more flesh in other areas if there's not a face to look at. It tends to get confused. So if there's not a real face looking at the camera, it's not going to do a very good job. I'm just showing you that it's called Maximin Facial Recognition. That's probably the better flesh there. With flesh, you really want to try and print an overall flesh, and then a flesh, like a medium flesh for the shadows. See the difference? And maybe even a red that kind of kiss it. Now, that's not doing much for the flesh, dark flesh, and maybe a brown. So on this design, this one's also very deceiving because if you look around the edge, what do you see? You see kind of some of this, this glowing. 
and you see kind of a, a break here, all this going on. You're thinking that's going to print. Well, let's take a look at it and see. On the underbase with info panel, that's a 1% dot, 2%. Never going to print. But again, if you want to feel warm and fuzzy about it, I'm selected on the underbase channel, control M on the keyboard, bring in the highlight just a hair, and that blue is now going to wash off onto the shirt. I want the colors to wash off onto the shirt because at that 5% opacity, they're just going to go to nothing, and it's going to give you that nice little kind of a subtle color around the image. That's going to print really nicely, by the way. Now, I didn't, re I didn't play with this. I could put the green, back, the green on. I could reduce the color. I'm just showing you that a design like this for the flesh, you typically will need the flesh tone and a brown or a red to kind of enhance the shadow areas of the flesh and print this thing out. That's all I have for today. This has been a wham-bam on how to do tweaks in T-CEPs. You can see I've used the same tools over and over and over. You're going to get real comfortable with them. They become second nature to you. You all know that you can email me direct. I am scott at tbiznetwork.com. There are 25 training videos online at www.t-seps.com. Make sure and watch those. As I always will gently tell you when you call me, I'll ask you, did you read the manual? And I encourage you to read the manual. It's 87 pages, and it's got a lot of step-by-steps and gives you lots of background on why you do certain things. And so I want you to make sure and crack the manual open. And don't be frustrated if you're a new user of TCEPs. TCEPs is very powerful, but it's the final tweaks that make a huge difference. All right, I'm going to wrap things up. This is Scott Fresner with T-Biz Network. I've enjoyed talking to you guys today. Hope you enjoyed the webinar. Thanks a lot for coming and attending.